Hi, my name is Chris. Thank you for tuning in. Today is my first paper I'm going to be doing on REI. This is a landmark paper looking at polycystic ovarian syndrome and comparing letrozole to Clomid. The main findings from this paper in brief was that letrozole is superior to Clomid and it did not increase the risk of congenital anomalies in any live births. My name is Chris. Let's get down to the paper. So to start off with this paper, this is an REI paper and it's focusing on infertility. Infertility can be caused by three main pathways, anovulation, tubal occlusion, or abnormal sperm. I'm focusing on anovulation and the most common cause in females is polycystic ovarian syndrome. The primary first line treatment has been Clomid, which was a 22% success rate in having a live birth after I think it was like five or six cycles of treatment. Um, and this paper was questioning whether or not Clomid is really truly first line or is letrozole also a option versus potentially superior to Clomid. So some time for definitions right now. So Clomid is a selective estrogen receptor modifier. It works um, by inhibiting a negative feedback loop um, by having estrogen stop the HPA axis and then this results in ovarian hyperstimulation with estrogen. This is different from letrozole. Letrozole is an aromatase inhibitor, so it inhibits the ability for your body to convert androgens to estrogens. This works in several locations, but this includes, you know, the ovarian follicles, peripheral tissue, as well as the brain. It doesn't affect the receptor portion of it, so there's still the ability for estrogen to work, um, but the, just the ability for your body to like, just translate it into estrogen at specific sites is how uh, letrozole works. The mnemonic that I kind of helped myself remember throughout this paper was let was better. So let bet is kind of how I re kind of remember it. And Clomid was like a close second. So that's how I kind of differentiated these two. And just remember that letrozole is aromatase and Clomid is going to be a serum. So for the methods of this paper, this was a double-blinded, randomized, multi-centered clinical trial recruiting 750 patients with diagnosis of polycystic ovarian syndrome via the Rotterdam criteria. Rotterdam criteria is an ovulation with either or both the diagnosis of hyperandrogenism or ultrasound finding of polycystic ovaries. So that was the diagnosis. So with those patients, they put 750 and it was double blinded. So they took pills, either with letrozole or Clomid. They put it into a second pill capsule. So they looked completely identical and they started the patients. The protocol for both of them was that on day three of the cycle, they would receive Clomid or letrozole, the blinded pill for five days and they would repeat this for five cycles or up until conception uh, or up until conception. So that was kind of the process. And so the main findings from this that they wanted to look at was the primary outcome was live birth. And the secondary outcomes was ability to have ovulation, whether they had a singleton, any abortion changes and any changes in congenital anomalies. And since this is a New England Journal of Medicine paper, this is the first table and this is comparing the population. So you can kind of see that roughly the age, the BMI, and a bunch of other statistics are roughly equally in these populations. From the main results, and I'll just pop it up right here, we'll look at their primary outcome right now. And their primary outcome was live births. And we're seeing that there's a 27.5% likelihood that there was gonna be a live birth versus 19.1% in the Clomid group showing a rate of 1.44 increase with a significant p-value of 0.007. When you subdivide that population, and I'll have to put up a different graph right here showing these curves, was that when you subdivide it into BMI, you actually show that the all cause for BMI was significant, but when you showed BMIs of under 30.3, that actually there was no significance and it was really only in the 30.3 to 39.4 group that we did see this true significance in the effectiveness of letrozole having ability for live birth compared to Clomid. The other secondary outcomes that they were looking at as well was singleton pregnancy and that showed roughly the same 96 to 93% with no significance in the relative rate. For the ovulation, there was a significant increase and that kind of makes sense because there was more live births with letrozole as well. Pregnancy loss was roughly around 30% in both groups. So neither medication caused an increased likelihood for 
any loss or first trimester loss as well. So looking at their last secondary outcome was congenital anomalies and the absolute number for the letrozole group was four and the clomid group was one. This is a difference in numbers between the two and you can speculate that maybe if there was an increased number in power there might be a difference but they didn't were able to power for this so they have to do more patients in the future to actually see if there was really a congenital anomaly difference. Other papers have not shown that there was a difference in congenital anomalies between the two medications. And actually in this study, there were fewer congenital anomalies than were reported in other Australian studies. And the reason why is that in the Australian studies, they surmise that likely because in Australia, there is more robust mandated reporting of all congenital anomalies. And that could be the reason why that there was fewer in this study, which was done in, in the United States. And that was pretty much the entire breakdown of this paper. In general, what this is showing is that letrozole now can, and it's now being used as a first line treatment for uh, infertility in patients with polycystic ovarian syndrome. And that Clomid is not really used as much, or it can, but it's no longer first line because now there's show that there's more benefits if you're using letrozole. I hope this paper helped. Um, I learned a lot making this paper. It was fun and REI is definitely an interesting field. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section below, and I am going to link the paper link as well in the description as well. Thanks. Bye.